Hi there, my name is Catherine and I'm welcoming you back to the devotional series on YouTube called Seasons. It's based on my book called Seasons, Thriving Through the Seasons of Life. And today we're going to be asking ourselves this question, to whom are you listening? Moses sent 12 mighty men as spies into the promised land. 10 men returned with a message that struck fear, despair, and resistance in the camp. Two men returned with a message of hope, exhortation, and encouragement. The children of Israel chose to listen to the message of fear. An entire generation bore the devastating consequences of that fear-based decision. In our media-driven age, we are bombarded with dire warnings on a daily basis. Economic soothsayers pronounce doom and gloom on a weekly basis. At the faintest whisper of regional instabilities, head headlines blast across the world that the end is near. Political camps carefully craft election campaigns presenting the worst case scenario, then brazenly present their candidates as modern day messiahs who will lead their nation out of the sure disaster caused by their rivals. Fear makes a terrible advisor. It is the worst possible foundation on which to base life altering decisions. Fear causes you to cave into wild speculations. Fear clouds your heart and mind and tempts you to give more credence to the voice of man than the voice of God. Jesus didn't sugarcoat the challenges that lay ahead for his disciples. He painted a clear picture of the future, including persecution, trials, and death. Like Joshua, however, Jesus promised an assured victory as long as they remained faithful. He exhorted his 12 disciples not to be alarmed and then challenged them to keep their hearts untroubled. His challenge echoes with his followers today. We have a choice. Do we listen to his voice and live in the sure peace that he is our good and perfect shepherd? Or do we listen to the myriad of fear mongers, allowing ourselves to be tossed to and fro in the winds of controversy, rumors, and deliberate misinformation that comes across our desks. So how do you know what voice you're actually listening to? The voice of God, while it is challenging and while it doesn't sugarcoat or whitewash the facts, always brings hope and encouragement and a way out of a situation. God always provides a solution to what's going on. When we listen to the voice of the enemy, he tempts us to feel anger and resentment and bitterness and suspicion. And when it is our own voice and we feel fear coming up or we feel uncertain, we can almost guarantee those feelings aren't coming from the Lord. But whatever you feel as you're skimming the headlines of the news, take those emotions before the Lord and dig down to find out what's really going on. What are you truly angry about? Is it the news story that you're angry about? Or is it a feeling that you don't have control of the situation? I would like to challenge you to spend twice as much time in prayer and listening to the Lord in the next couple of days than you do listening to the opinions of man and the so-called experts on news channels, blogs, and newspapers. Get his perspective of what's going on in the world and when you begin the practice of listening to what God's heart is about a situation, it is going to help you to discern what is true, what is blatantly false news, and what your favorite news channel or your not so favorite news channel is trying to do to manipulate you to be part of their political agenda.